Welcome to another episode of the NHC podcast. This was an Hello. unscheduled episode oh, because we're recording this uh, shortly after the discovery. Oh, sorry, shortly after the description of the long-awaited lorry maniraptor. Um, you're gonna get used to me not referring to it much by its scientific name. It we'll boring. get into that reason later on. Yeah, <laughs> trust us. Just yeah. So. Today we're talking about Lori, uh, scientific name Hesperornithoides mislerai, mislerai. Something like I that. Pr- pronounce it mislerai. Yeah, it's that. A yeah, that could work. Mislerai, mislerai, mislerai. Probably it's two s's. And Hesperornithoides mislerai is a troodontid. So one of the Peruvian dinosaurs. But the big deal about Hesperonithoides is it is from the late Jurassic of North America, specifically the Morrison Formation. The same formation has produced uh, uh, Allosaurus, uh, Diplodocus, Stegosaurus, well, all of those. Just your classic Jurassic Formation, basically. Yeah. Not even this... going to mention Ornitholesti. Shake my head. <laughs> so Hesperonithoides is a really big deal, largely because of that. Um, I'll be showing the skeletal first so that you guys know exactly what it is. Well, it's a troodontid, so you can imagine the rest from there. Yes, yeah. but hush. <laughs> uh, let me get the skeletal. Building suspense, I see. Much. And uh, just totally not. The description is new, the discovery is not. Yeah, we're getting too- into that. First, let's just discuss uh, one thing, uh, which is that Lori is technically not the first Jurassic troodontid. That title goes to Coparion, which, uh, let me just double check, is also from the Morrison Formation. No, it's from Utah, uh, from the Morrison Formation. Coparion, troodontid, from the Jurassic, wow! Don't tell me it's a tooth taxon. Um, <laughs> it's fallen yeah. from the curse of a lot of troodontids, namely Troodon, Pectinodon, Ricardo Estesia, of just being named based on a tooth. So but thankfully, Lori escapes that curse by being pretty yes. well preserved. Lori's got yeah. some nice legs. I'll admit that. <laughs> Wasn't it partially destroyed a little bit? Uh, yeah. So the thing is, uh, they were excavating a large sauropod dinosaur. Super Uh, Supersaurus. Yes, Supersaurus was being excavated in the summer of 2001, and they discovered the lorry specimen accidentally. Um, uh, so some portions were damaged or lost because they did not expect to be excavating it. So, oof. Um. This is sad. Despite that, it's still pretty well preserved. I mean, yeah, got pretty it lucky. did kind of mess up with the back of the skull, as you can see yeah. in the skeletal. Yeah, just being a little collage of dots. Hey, yeah. it's better than completely destroyed. Oh, oh yeah, absolutely. Definitely. And so I mean, it's was... still better than the other Ju- uh, Jurassic World Daunted. <laughs> yeah, yeah so not if, since you brought it up that the other one was from Utah. Lori is from Wyoming. Yes. Um, so, Lori, Hesperornithoides, uh, was discovered, as we just said, in 2001. Why has it taken 18 years to be published? It's just that complicated. So they started, it took them a while to actually get together because, like we said, it was not the focus of the dig. Completely unexpected, so I believe it took them a while to actually get organized. They put together a team, an international team. You've got Scott Hartman, Mickey Mortimer, um, Dean Lomax, William uh, R. Wall, Jessica Lippincott, David M. Lovelace. Really big team from America and England. So it was, of course, very hard to actually get them to actually study the specimen together. I believe there was also a Kickstarter to actually fund them actually meeting up to see the specimen. So it had a troubled description uh, study. They also attempted to do the most complex uh, phylogenetic analysis of 
all Mana Raptor forms. It's really extensive work. Took a lot of time. Mickey Mortimer led the, the phylogenetic analysis. Uh, so a lot of work. To add insult to injury, uh, when they first submitted the paper back in 2017, I believe, it was blocked. I believe late 2017 uh, or early 2018. It was blocked by a biased peer reviewer. So they had to resubmit it. Uh, so it's really gone through a lot to get to publication, but what we got was really cool. An understatement of the year. Um, yes. Hesperonithoides uh, mislari was revealed to be the name. Before we discuss the phylogeny, which is the, the main attraction, let's be honest. Oh, God. Let's discuss Hesperonithoides mislari as a name, because we're going to be that superficial. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, to be honest, it's for something that's been so hyped up and so interesting, it's a pretty poor name. I mean, when you get down to it, Hesper Hesperonifoides just means Western and bird-like, or kind of bird. So, which is a really generic yeah. name for a trodont that, this, that um, showed up this early. Yes. I think it fits since it's a trodontid. I mean... You do have, like what? Soron authorities. So, yes, Soroin yeah, authorities. Soroin authorities and Hesperonychus. Well, Hesperonychus is not a troodontid at all, so that one doesn't count. You, you have Sinornithoides as well. Yeah. Um, that's it, though. <laughs> yeah, uh, the name is bland. The thing yeah. is, and for me, the name only means like Hesperornis. Hesperornis being a completely different kind of bird. Being yeah, a it's bird. Nothing like. When you look yeah. up the name of Lori Hesperonis, chances are you're just going to end up with Hesperonis. Or Hesperonis. Or Hesperonis, which is a big issue uh, for me. I mean, yeah, it's not that big, let's face it, but yeah. I mean, it's pretty superficial, just... We're just Absolutely. Just... I mean, it's, it's, by, it's a m name miles better than, let's say, Thanos, Dynamic, <laughs> yeah. you, you know, you get the point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dynamosaurus Imperiosus, yes. all of these <laughs> that one as well. dumb names throughout history, but let's not just cherry pick I mean, and only mention recent ones. If we're gonna but, get far back into history, we can point at Scrotum Humanum. Okay, because, uh, <laughs> we are gonna go that far. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever um, came up with that name is just... Uh, but yeah, childish. there was one name, I'm going to give credit to one name, which was sort of rumored and toyed around as being, the official, as being, you know, maybe this is what they'll name it, which was Wyomini Lori, or Wyomini Lorini. That would have been a good name. Uh, Wyomini has stuck with me. I, but... I definitely feel like Lori, as, in the, as a species name, for example, should have stuck around. The Absolutely. current species name does reference the family. But still, Lori, as it's, for once, it's a nickname, so everybody already yeah. knows it. That, it's been Lori. a nickname for fifth, over 15 years now. Yeah, so everybody already knows the specimen as Lori, so implementing it into the species name would have just made sense. Yeah. But that's real nitpicking, and there's not much, n not much substantial uh, yeah. enlightenment we can offer in that respect. The name makes sense. It works with the animal, so we can't really make a big deal about it. But it know, could have been better. It could have been. Much it could better. have been better. And I think it should have deserved something a bit better. Not awesome, bro. Because that's just sinful. At least it isn't awesome, bro. Yeah. <laughs> Dynamo oh. Terra, I'm looking at you. <laughs> Anyways, um, the main attraction is the phylogenetic tree. I'm gonna share it here. Um, just oh, here to we go. let let the podcasters know uh, that what the audience will see will be the phylogenetic tree zoomed in and slightly uh, and panning down because it's just so huge. It's a message. Yeah, it's a lot to take in. You have to go into like a different yeah. um, browser to be able to view this file because it's so big. A different tab Ooh, no, browser. My... Whatever. Oh. Oh. You need to bring your own computer with you just to handle the sheer <laughs> awesomeness. <laughs> I did. <laughs> Okay, so this is huge. This uh, and this is what a phylogenetic tree looks like. It has a starting point. In this one, it's basal Maniraptora forma. Um, I mean, the starting point is, I think, Maniraptora morpha, actually, since we've got Onifolestis as yes, well. Yes, I do. Yes, I, I stand corrected. 
<laughs> uh, it's around Mana Raptor Morpha, Mana Raptor Forma, around there. And it's just branching down within manor, all Mana Raptor forms. From Basilmost to birds, to several derived birds. Um, prehistoric birds only, I believe. I don't believe they mention any modern birds. I haven't looked that much into the very derived birds segment. But uh, all these names. No, we, we no, get some Struvio. modern. Struvio, for example, so. and Columba. For yes. example, is another one, so we have some yeah. modern birds as well. Uh, but that shouldn't uh, be our focus. It's course. not our focus at all. Um, that is one big tree. Definitely. Um, just uh, Yo-Yo is here to join. Do we let him in? Let him in. Let okay. Him in. Yeah, sure. Why not? Yo, yo, yo. Well, yeah, but now that now before we get into the phylogeny of it, uh, yeah. yo, yo's gonna join. Oh, and now he says, "Wait, one sec." Screw, okay. screw him. <laughs> uh, <laughs> if we don't cut this part out of us complaining, about him, yo, just remember. Oh, never mind. Uh, hey, hey, yo, yo is here. Okay. Well, hello there. Oh, hello I there. didn't mention who, I didn't mention who was joining, but now I can. Uh, I am a Caroraptor, <laughs> and I am being joined today by Armin. Yes, I am here. Beaver. Okay. <laughs> Good introduction. Kala Keep it up. Kalamakau. Hey. And Yo-Yo. Hello. So we're going <laughs> to cut that out and put it in the front. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Phylogeny. So, oh god, basically, man. yo yo, what we mentioned, this is the entire phylogenetic tree of all Mana Raptor forms. For some, they have omitted certain scrappy genera. They do mention their characters, though, and why they were omitted in the supplementary data. Uh, and some of these do stand for like multiple groups. For instance, there is. Um, let me find it. There is Unilagia sensulato, which encompasses two species of Unilagia and also uh, Unquilosaurus, I believe. Uh, or Nequin Raptor as well. So, yeah. Um, so, the phylogeny is. Uh, well, what can we say about it? It's impressive. We can go on and on about how incredible it is that we finally have such an exhaustive phylogeny. Yeah, but it, we can praise this um, all day. It's a lot to take in at first glance. Yeah, which many have already noticed. <laughs> now, we could praise this all day, so let's get into the actual discussion of it. Um, the clade in my the, the phylogeny, in my opinion, works in two ways. First of all, it what it offers is a com is a very uh, drastic restructuring of the different clades and groups within Manoraptor forms. Uh, in the sense True. that uh, we've got Unilagidae now resurrected as its own family within a sl new, slightly messed up uh, version of Dinonychosauria. We've got uh, Therizinosaurs and Alvarezsaurs being grouped together. Uh, to some extent, they're as close as can be, essentially. We've got shifting up of or within um, Ornithomimosauria. Uh, we've got uh, Ankyorniciforms, uh, Ankyornithidae, Ankyornithines, and Archaeopterygids have been lumped. So there's a big lump there, which I feel was inevitable. Uh, I'm I'm really happy that it got lumped together. Yeah, it makes things easier. <laughs> <laughs> no, but there are a lot of similarities as well between yeah, the yeah. two. Yeah, of course. And um, Unilagidae being found within Dinonychosauria is nice to see because there's been this big ruckus lately yes, about some, whether or not... Uh, previously, it has sometimes been recovered as inside Dromaeosauridae, or some others um, placed them in AVLA. Yeah, uh, basically as derived flightless birds, because they are very bird-like. Uh, 
Of course. And to clarify, this is the group that includes um, Ostrovepter and Rohanavis. Rohanavis? Rohanavis. Rohanavis. Uh, I would like to just point out that when we refer to birds in this, we are using it in the same sense as the scientific term aviale, which is separate from, you know, Dinosauria. Uh, I believe it's defined as all uh, theropods more closely related to modern birds, aves, than to Dinonychosaurs, uh, such as Dinonychus or Dromaeosaurus. It's a bit flexible, the actual definition, but the, the, the clade itself is pretty standard. It's everything more closely related to modern birds than to your Dinonychosaurs. Yeah. Um, we've got reinforcement, and now we're, let's move a bit more into the taxa. We've got Balaor being reinforced. As a, as a bird, rather than the dromaeosaur it was originally described as. Uh, Avialan balaur is something that's been strongly hypothesized as of late and is reinforced in this. I will say this, I, I do feel that when it comes to reinforcing contested opinions, this phylogeny will, is best at that, such as the Unilagines or balaur, because it's yeah. so extensive, and stuff like Unilagines and balaur are firmly nested, that's the term, uh, within their positions. They're not subject to, like, switching around. i just like to mention that when uh, an animal, the one term used is steps, and basically how many steps it takes to move uh, an animal from its placement in one group to another determines how flexible it is, often. That's basically the definition. So Balaor is found to be avialan and takes eight steps to go... Uh, out of Aviale. Um, to move into Dromaeosauridae. It takes eight steps to move to Dromaeosauridae, so it's firmly placed in Aviale. Uh, shall we get into the controversial ones now? I mean, I think we should just start from top to bottom. Yeah, top to bottom. Um, right. Okay, well, right off the bat, we're in Ornithomimosauridae. Ornithomimidae, Ornithomimosauria? Ornithomimosauria, uh, because it has Dinocarus in it. True. Yeah. Although Dinocyridae, yeah, and there's Dinocyridae there at the base, I believe, with now just Dinocyrus and Hexing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Gerudomimus having been moved out. Uh, automatically, we find a controversial taxon here, which is the Angiac taxon, which is a French theropod, often described as being an Ornithomimosaur. But... Everyone who has ever seen the skeleton, apart from the original describers, finds it is actually a noasaur, a type of dinosaur more closely related to Ceratosaurus and Carnotaurus than Ornithomimosaurus. It really looks hardly anything like an Ornithomimosaur and much more like a noasaur, in the shape of the skull, the tiny arms, all of it. And now, here's the thing. Mickey Mortimer has spoken and said that she feels it is a ceratosaur, a, more specifically a noasaur. But they still represent it in the phylogeny as being an ornithomimosaur. This is because that is, I believe, the published opinion, the published data. And the phylogeny is meant to purely represent data. It's not something opinion. So in flexible taxa or taxa of which there is very poor, uh, very scrappy remains, Bear in mind that this is not an opinion. This is merely what the data says. This is not what the authors are necessarily advocating, as evidence with the Angiac taxon. The phylogeny places it in Ornithomimosauria, but the authors feel it is a ceratosaur. Yeah. That'll probably be... That, they'll probably change that soon if there's a new paper to help. It, not a new opinion. paper. It still is undescribed. Oh, Kinda really? Oh, yeah. yeah. We're still waiting then, for the paper on that. But the authors of that paper have said they are still sticking to Ornithomimosaur, which is weird. Hmm. This kind of reminds me of that. Okay. Kind of reminds me of the Delta Dromia situation. Mm. So, yeah, which sort of. was originally thought to be Allosauroid, I believe, and now it's also thought to be perhaps Noasauroid. Like yeah. Noasauroid, like, yeah. Noasauroid, yeah. Like the Angiac taxon. Uh, moving further on in Ornithomimosauria, we come to the most controversial one, in my opinion. Oh, here we go. Timimus. 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 Ornithom it's Ornithomimus, though, so it should be Timimus. Dab. Uh, yeah, potato, potato. <laughs> yeah. So Timimus, as the name suggests, was originally identified as an Ornithomimosaur. 
Uh, the Tim refers to various people, the son of the discoverers and also another paleontologist. And Mimus is a reference to it be what they thought was an ornithomimosaur. However, a lot of recent papers have found it, basically one 2012 and 2018, have found it to be Tyrannosauroid. Tyrannosaur, be the first yeah. Australian Tyrannosauroid. I think assuming it... Megaraptorans aren't Tyrannosauroids. Wasn't it put uh, closely with Centenoraptor for once? I believe so, yes. So, yeah, because, yeah, because we do have a this South tree, American. For example, Centenoraptor is put closely to Comsognathus. Yes. Now, Tamimus is the one that bugs me the most. Because they do not give their reasoning for it, either in the paper or the supplementary material. It's the only one for which they don't, and that really bugs me. Yeah, they kind of because just, like, we do it. have the material for it, and it's been recognized multiple times. Two thousand nine also considered it a nomen dubium. Ah, uh, well, in the, the paper describing Australovenator. So, yeah, it's it's a big shame that they didn't look into that one personally. Um, but that's it for the controversial ones on Orthomimus. Oh, yeah, there's like a couple of, ooh, Gerudomimus is no longer lumped with Dinochirus, but n not lumped, I mean, found a sister to Dinochirus, but that's neither here nor there. That's really nothing too special, let's be honest. It's not one of the things that you will immediately point out. Yes, it's, it, and it's really just a very slight di di difference. It's not moving what it out of one that? family and into another. What was that? Okay. What? That was me. I don't know. Hush. I love Tamimus for how controversial it is. Yeah. No, it's great for controversy. It yeah. was found to be Yunan Lagain as well at some point. Really? Oh my gosh. This is so, yeah. all, over, all over the place. Yeah. Um, they probably couldn't be bothered and were just like, okay, let's just put that in. Therizinosaurus, nothing special there. Mm, yeah. Mm -mm. Pretty standard. Fukui Ven ah, now we go on to Alvarezsaurus. Again, nothing much there, except for Fukui Venator. Well, and not Fukui just Fukui Venator. Can it, can oh god, us? oh god, oh god, yes, I just saw that, oh god. Let's start oh, with okay. Fukui Venator. <laughs> Fukui Venator is found uh, to be uh, uh, Alvarezsaur. Fukui Venator is Japanese and has had a very terrible... Uh, very terrible yeah. luck with being identified. It's it's basically on the same level as Megaraptora is when it comes to unknown positions. Because in the original description, it was found to be equally closely related to Ornithomimosaurs, Manoraptorans, and Ornitholestes. Yeah, well, basically we have no clue. So the paper finds that it is within a uh, base of Alvarezsaurroidi, but only two steps moves it into basal therizinosauroid. So it's a, a not one of those very flexible genera. It's not solidly nested. And like we said, we need to bear it in mind how many steps it takes. The phylogeny is pure data, it, but in reality, it could be that uh, there's poor material, poor preservation. Um, perhaps it just isn't exactly what... The, the data isn't lying, but the data could be limited. And for that respect, there is an, a human factor that does need to be present, I feel, in assigning phylogeny. Because there is convergent evolution as well. You, animals can convergently evolve traits, like Megaraptor and claws being convergent with dra Dromaeosaur foot claws to some extent. Mm. So, unless, you know, you're arguing for a very controversial one. <laughs> 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 Manoraptor, uh, Megaraptor hands are actually just a full clause that switch places halfway through evolution. There's some Tugel Dixon stuff right there. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Fulcri Venator, eh, it's flexible. Then there's Pelican and Mimus, which has already been um, identified very solidly as an Mimus, so there has been no disagreement over it up until this paper came along, which yeah. recovered it as one of the first branching Alvarezsauroids. Which is very weird. Again, only two steps moves it into Ornithomimosauria. So very flexible. Uh, and also, they say only two. Uh, they say two of their characters in twenty using twenty eighteen 
which supported a Nornithomimosaurian identification for uh, Pelicanomimus, were not used, uh, only one from Brizati et al. Its true position is unclear, they conclude, pending a detailed osteology such as someone's unreleased description. There's, there's still a material that needs to be described from Pelicanomimus, which would clear it up. Now that rounds out Alvaris Oroidi, already getting into some very controversial stuff. Not as much as we're going to hit soon. Yeah, now we are <laughs> moving into Penaraptora. We're going yes. downhill from here. Ornithomimosauria. Nothing much here. Oviraptorosauria. Not... What did I say? You said only only from Mimosauria. No, I said over Raptorosauria. No, you said <laughs> Okay, okay. comment back me up on this one. He said us... only from Mimosauria. <laughs> comment down make below. A new... <laughs> make a new genus <laughs> called Team Ovi Armin Mimis. versus Team Akero. <laughs> or join <laughs> Team Clomcat if you don't care. Join no, Team Ovi Mimis. The uh, point is there are in fact a couple of changes. Oh um, there are changes. Far... Yeah, as far as I could tell, um, the last phylogeny I saw regarding Oviraptorosaurus, for example, we covered Protoarchaeopteryx as one of the more basal members of the group. In this tree, it's moved outside of Oviraptorosauria mm. as the most basal mm. Panaraptoran. Yeah. And then what? Well, we have the more basal species. We have similar Cordopteryx, um, Cordopteryx, and that kind of stuff. And then we have the split between Canagnaphids, which are more the herbivorous type, stuff like Ansu. I think that's how we pronounce it. Yeah, and yeah. The, the classic oviraptorids, like oviraptor, of course, Chittipati. And he, here you can see a few channels that are switched. I mean, I'm sure there are, again, reasons how many steps it takes to put them into the previous position. For example, in Sizeosaurus, of, of course, known for the massive buck we, teeth it had, and Avimimus have yeah. been moved into... Oviraptor uh, Day and Canagnaphy Day, respectively. Despite also, in previous, yeah, sorry, go ahead. Despite in previous and um, phylogenetic trees being both placed as rather basal animals, incisival being one of the basal most, um, sometimes considered to be, or both Acheropteryx being sometimes con considered to be um, the same as Incisivosaurus. Well, mm. Avi Mimus was basically often seen as the one step before the split in the group. There are also I would a like few... To... Okay, yeah, just go ahead. Yeah, um, I would also like to point out, since we brought up Avimimus, Col, Colguva, is discovered, is placed as the sister taxon to Avimimus. Colguva was previously found to be an Alvarezaurid. So that's a jump outside of one of the Mimus, of Oviraptoridae, and into Alvarezauridae. But the paper does say it would only take one step to move Col back into Alvarezauridae, and call is known from a single foot. So, so yeah. Which is a thing with many of these. A lot of the reasons why certain genera are kind of controversially placed in this tree is because of pretty bad remains. Yes. I mean, yeah. Don't, and there are also two and other examples here, um, being Microvenata and Gigantor Gigantoraptor, which are both, um, in previous analysis, were placed within Canagnaphidae in a basal position, Gigantoraptor was originally, when it was described, placed in Oviraptoridae, and in this tree, it moves back into Oviraptoridae. Yeah. Right. It's now four steps away to um, Kianath... How do you... Kianagnathidae, I think. Yeah, Kianath. I would go with Cianagnathidae, but who do I know? Eh, another what potato do I know? Potato. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that... I might be butchering the pronunciation. Excuse me. That's okay. Excuse all of us, just in case. Yeah, always. We're a bunch of Euro trash, for the most part. <laughs> I mean, Eva isn't, but... Am I a joke to you? <laughs> yes, yes, you are. <laughs> I don't even know what else. So that rounds up over up to our story. And now we come to a split, because now we are in... We're not, we've just moved... Uh, we're in we Paravis. 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 Paravis, yes, Paravia. Paraves. Paravis. Um, Paravis. <laughs> so there is a two-way split in Paravis. One, it, it, it branches out into two lines. One of these is basically the linear line leading, the mostly linear line leading towards modern birds. Including Scansoropteryx and... Benetic. Yes. And Balaor as well. Now this is the one half of the split uh, at the base of Paravis. 
the other half of the split is basically Dynanikosauria. And we start out Dynanikosauria with the basalmost uh, group of Dynanikosauria being Archaeopterygidae, which, as we said, also encompasses, which was lumped uh, and was the senior synonym of Ancyornithidae. Um, this one, there's not much, there's not a lot that happened here. They just got lumped. It's more taxa moving out of uh, the Ancyornithidae and uh, out of what is now Archaeopterygidae. But the actual taxa that have stayed are solid. There's no bizarre additions. Um, and Archaeopteryx uh, and Archaeopterygidae is the first group that we come across that at some point evolved flapping flight or flight in any way. They were likely basally flightless. They were not flighted at the base. And Curinus, for one, is not able to fly or glide. It would probably just have been able to do wing-assisted running. It is somewhere on the Archaeopteryx line, probably, Ar Archaeopteryx level, uh, within Archaeopterygidae, that flight evolved. Uh, so that's it. So flight evolved halfway through Archaeopterygidae, and no weird taxonomy there. So... <laughs> <laughs> and now we come to Union Lag Day. Um, oh, we come to a group that includes uh, Halskaraptorans. Um, Halskaraptoridae, I believe. Yeah. I believe they're and oh. uh, Union Lagidae. Ah, yeah. no, the Union Lagidae. Halskaraptorans, sorry. Yeah. So basically, yeah. our, the ones we often see portrayed as swan like. I'm not sure how much of a paleomeme that is. That is a paleomeme. Yeah, I mean, meme. in terms of being white. Uh, and having a well, yeah, obvious coloration. And standing in water. <laughs> well, no, they were semi-aquatic, what's your point? Okay, yeah, so Whatever. the semi-aquatic part <laughs> is accurate. The semi-aquatic part is very accurate. Okay, yeah, so we have the basically the swimming, um, quote-unquote, raptors, and the yeah. fishing raptors with Austroraptor and such. Yeah, yeah, Yunalagidae is not semi-aquatic, necessarily, is not semi-aquatic, I believe. Oh no, 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 the, not just the semi-aquatic is only has they were like hair But they were so yes, they would have been fish eaters to some extent. <laughs> we have Ostroraptor, the big one, Buitraptor, the generic one, and then we have Pyroraptor, the French one. I like which is a new addition. Oh, 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 oh. The fishing one, the other one, and the new one. <laughs> Pyroraptor, uh, famous for its appearance in Dinosaur Planet. Pyroraptor uh, is was found to be a dromaeosaur. And is now found to be a Unilagid in this. Um, that's basically it. It would be the first European Unilagid, but having it, but uh, just let me point out that the two ones I mentioned already, Ostraptor and Buitraptor, are like the majority of Unilagidae South American, and it would not be the first time a South American taxon of theropod is found in France. Uh, we have two French uh, abelisaurs along with several other scrappy unnamed remains of abelisaurs in France. So wasn't, it would just fit in. Wasn't, or, wasn't Ornithodesmus also moved to Unilagia? Uh, let me check. Uh, that, 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 that was removed a, pre, a posteriori. It was removed yeah. afterwards. Oh, I see. Uh, because it's terrible. <laughs> as remains. It's, it's another one of those Jurassic ones, yeah, I believe. Yeah. yeah, it's one of those crappy Jurassic ones for, known from a bit of the Sacrum. Yeah, that one is from Isle of Wight. Right. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It was from the Isle of Wight. White. Uh, now moving on, we also have Pamparaptor, which is so. so I mean, it's nothing special. It was originally described as Unilagid. No, it was found Dromaeosaurid. It was a. It's, it's a bit of a Dromaeosaurid or Unilagid mix. Here it was just found to be Unilagid. Nothing very special there. Um. And then we get Rahanavis, which is the flying one from Madagascar. Nice to see one. it there. And again, uh, flight being evolved secondarily within uh, a group, just like how Archaeopteryx evolved and possibly others evolved it within Archaeopterygidae after splitting off. Unilagines were flightless at the base, and then as the more derived ones developed flight, like Rahanavis. Quite obviously, considering Ostroraptor, no way that thing flew with it. Yes, that thing is six meters long and short arms. arms. Yes. Short arms, pretty big. Like, if it was a Romeosaur, it would have been one of the biggest, in fact. Yes. Now, it's its own it's thing. Up, so. It's up there with Utahraptor, Dakota yeah. Raptor, and Achillobata. 
Now, speaking, speaking of, of which... Dakota Raptor, <laughs> <laughs> that was a sick segue I did there. Yeah. Dakota Raptor <laughs> is placed in Union Lagide, which is revolutionary in that it's, oh, oh my god, what? And also, Saurian's going to change up their Dakota Raptor now. In uh, year 2089. Change it to a turtle. Yeah, it... <laughs> Please change no, it to turtle a turtle, me... Saurian. Tur- no, turtle, we, d- we don't do that here. We're not about that. Turtle bit's being corrected. Stop spreading that misconception. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, um, delete that. We need more turtles. Yeah. They- I'm sorry, Y-Rex. The Y-Rex specimen was discovered in an assemblage, and someone asked, you know, the, the guy who described it, say, were there any other theropods in the assemblage? And the, the guy and the panthologist goes, nope, just 27 turtles. <laughs> 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 we have we have enough turtles in Hell Creek formation as is. Yes. So yeah. So, um, you um, like guy revolutionary I... placement for the Dakota Raptor. But what is the first thing you do when you see the uh, an animal in weird placement? Check the paper and see how many steps it takes. It becomes a basal dromaeosaurid in three steps only. That's not nothing, that's not like the, the one step for Kolguva, let's say. But it's also not much. Uh, and it's not a huge Dromaeosaur, so not on the same level as Dromaeosaurus, Velociraptor, all those, it's more basal. But still, it could move to Dromaeosaurida in three steps. I should also mention that um, it's obviously not all that complete. Which is interesting, I find. It's not all that complete, that... it's also yeah. two specimens, which sucks. Yeah. And I so... don't know if they only did holotypes for this. Yeah, I don't know. But I find it interesting that um, both of the major attacks that were moved into this group, Pyroraptor and Dakota Raptor, are both mainly known from the limbs. I think Pyroraptor is known from an arm, pretty complete, yes. and both feet, or well, parts of yep, both. Yeah, exactly, exactly. And Dakota Raptor is also known from arms and feet, mostly. Yeah. I mean, there are no a couple skulls. of vertebrates. Uh, vertebrates. No skulls. Yeah, no skulls. No skulls, not many vertebrates. Yeah. Skulls yeah. would change a lot, probably. Oh, absolutely. So, yeah. And also, the Codoraptor's multiple specimens. They're also known from... A, also, the specimens are from multi-taxon bone beds, which could also mess it up if you've got, like, a claw from something else yeah. in there. Which, yeah. So, the Codoraptor's already in a bit of a mess right now. A lot of criticism has fallen under it. Honestly, we need a Codoraptor redescription. A third-party description, please. Or just a really good um, find. Monograph. Yeah. Yeah, but even even let's not wait for a new fossil. We do have like these remains. Just someone get a second opinion on this thing, please. And someone lump it with a carrot. No, okay. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, well, we get to your namesake soon enough. Yes. <laughs> oh God. Uh, then we also have Unilagia sensulata, which encompasses uh, Unilagia and I believe Nuquen, Nuquen raptor, and possibly also Unquilosaurus. Uh, but yeah, that's it for Unilaga Day. And now we're going to Troodon today. But, um, there's not much from Troodon today, is there? Not that I can tell by. I mean, we the only buckets. edition is Hesperon Authorities. <laughs> uh, not that many teeth, but we do have uh, unnamed taxa, which is lovely. Troodon sensulato, which encompasses uh, Stone Lycosaurus and Latin Venatrix, and I believe the two medicine taxon as well, which is quite probably Stone Lycosaurus, but not confirmed. And that's it, really. There's not much on Troodon today. Troodon today is fairly safe, thank God. It didn't change that much, yeah. Yeah. Too bad tooth taxon then, are a curse in it. Then we go on to uh, Microraptor. Microraptora and Dromaeosauridae, which have a sort of 50-50 split. They sort of, this is the last two groups of uh, Dinolycosauria. Dromaeosauridae and Microraptoria. Microraptoria appears first, so we'll discuss that one. And uh, we have, t- uh, I'd just like to say that t- Tianuraptor is recovered as basal to both. It's just outside Microraptora and Dromaeosauridae. And the first one that pops up is in, in Microraptora is a Keraraptor. Would Which would be that? a very large North American Microraptoran. Now, it would not be the first Microraptoran from North America. You'd also have uh, Hesperonychus, 
which is allegedly a Microraptoran, although this paper actually discovers it as not being a Microraptoran, but uh, an Avialin, I believe. Instead, you get Bambiraptor also thrown into yeah. Microraptor. Yeah, it, it appears, yeah, Hesperonychus becomes Avialin uh, just because they're uh, using a holotype, but they do use all the Microraptorian like characters. Uh, Hesperonychus is three steps away from Microraptoria in Aves. And Acaraptor is in Microraptoria. Uh, but um, it's just one step away from being in its usual Eudromaeosaurian place. Just one step. And a Caraptor is just two pieces of the skull. So, very sketchy taxon. Could easily move. So, nothing big. I would honestly be really interested in North American Microraptor and for a Caraptor, but I doubt that's the case. We also have Bambi Raptor, as we said, which is usually found in Sornitho as a sister to Sornitholestes. I thought you were going to say Sornithoids. No, Sornitholestes, but it's only one step away to go closer to Eudromaeosaurs. And we also have Variraptor in Microraptor, Microraptora, which is really big for me, in my opinion, because Variraptor. Uh, it's not like a really big thing, but I'd like to go in depth about the various steps for that taxon because my Variraptor is usually found to be very similar to the Pyroraptor because both Variraptor and Pyroraptor are from the same formation, the Greza Reptile formation in France. And oh, Variraptor and Pyroraptor have no overlapping remains, <laughs> which is already very suspicious. Um, it mm. just has like uh, a hip and some other bones. Because the genus is based on three specimens, so that's lovely. Um, but it only takes three steps to join Unanlagine. And as we already said, it's extremely scrappy remains. So I can easily see it being sister to Pyroraptor in uh, Unanlagine. Or vice versa. But I would be very surprised if they are found to be distinct, like in completely different families. And the paper does not argue for that explicitly. The data does represent that, but the paper uh, advocates for caution. Mm -hmm. um, so that's it for Microraptora. You've got your Microraptor. Ah, and you've got Microraptor, which is another flying uh, specimen, and that could have, it definitely could have glided. And there is also a movement made uh, supporting it being capable of flapping flight. But whatever the case, this is once again. Flapping flight being a derived feature of this clade. It's not basal. You would have a Caraptor as basal, so not flying. Bambi Raptor, Vera Raptor, Zenuan Long, all of these incapable of flight. And it's uh, at the level Cyanithosaurus, Microraptor, Changyu Raptor, where you get the ability to fly. Interestingly enough, uh, nested uh, high up in Microraptor is Velociraptor Osmolske. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> So, Velociraptor mongoliensis, we'll get to that later uh, in a little bit, but Velociraptor mongoliensis is, of course, unmoved from its position as a derived dromaeosaur, obviously. But Velociraptor osmoske is a, a species of Velociraptor from the uh, Iren Dabasu formation, uh, if I remember correctly. Uh, nope, I, I'm not remembering correctly. Velociraptor osmoske is from. Oh god, where is it from? <laughs> I'm gonna go to Dinosaur Revolution's Wikipedia page because Dinosaur Revolution is the only appearance by Osmoske. It's in the Wulansu High Formation, also known as the Bayan Mandahu Formation. I was confusing it with Bayan Shira for a moment. It's from the Bayan Mandahu Formation with uh, Velociraptor Osmoske. That's where it's from. And Velociraptor Osmoske, just like a Caraptor, is only skull remains. So, uh, and it would take. Let me see. It would take... Oh, God. Two steps to join it with Velociraptor mongoliensis. So, yeah. Although the data represents it as being Microraptor, it is still uh, strongly supported to be the sister to Velociraptor. Not least the fact that they were basically next to each other. Yeah. So that concludes it for Microraptora. Going into Dromaeosauridae, we have Dinolycus, Eclabata, Euteraptor, 
Velociraptor Mongoliensis. Nothing Torn special, really. Nothing special, no. Absolutely nothing special. Pathetic, <laughs> even. Uh, okay, that's a bit harsh. <laughs> now, let's, that concludes the, the Dinonychosauria half of the split that we mentioned is at the end of Anima Proforma. The other ha split here is... Scans... Is... Uh, Scansoropterigidae. Yeah, it's AVLA, and at the very base of that you have Scansoriopteridae with Scansorioptorix, obviously, Ichi, Epidexipteryx, I believe the others are also present there, but removed a posteriori because they're just not that important. They don't change much. They're all clearly Scansorioptorigids. Yeah, and Popterix is, I mean, what else is going to be? Yeah. Um, and this is the first time that Pedopina is found to be a Scansorioptorigid. Uh, Pedopina is only known from feet, from the hind legs. Rex, you would love that. And it's got very long penaceous feathers, which would be the first instance of penaceous feathers in Scansoriopterygids. Mm. That's why Pedopina means penaceous feathers on the legs. But the one step feather. moves it. But one step moves it up to Archaeopterygidae, which is where it traditionally is. Well, it traditionally is in Ankyornithidae, which is now lumped with Archaeopterygidae. So it's just one step. So again, nothing revolutionary there. It's just the data being giving uh, a false impression of its position due to the limited nature uh, of its remains. And that's pretty much it. Then we have Zongornis, Boxitornis, Balaur, Sapiornis, and then we're just getting into birds, birds, birds. Bird, 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 bird. Lots and lots. Armin, and lots. I will ban you. Okay, okay. Oh, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> Jeez. No, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> but yeah, that concludes the phylogeny. So a lot of odd choices of taxa. The most dramatic, famous, the most, the one that's received the most recognition is Dakota Raptor being in Lagid. But again, that's only three steps. Then you have a Keraptor, Velociraptor's Mosque, all of which are just one step away. Even Pelicanomimus is very few steps away. It's it's a lot of the time just it's, based it's on the fact that they are pretty poor remains for many yeah. of these taxa. And I would just like to conclude by saying that the phylogenetic tree is incredible. It's the most exhaustive data collection and representation ever made for Manora Pluriforma. Yeah. But don't you dare use it without the, the paper, because then you are butchering the author's intentions, you are butchering the results of the paper, you are misusing it, shame on you. Always use it in conjunction with the paper. Always. Oh my god. <laughs> You're quite careful yeah. though. <laughs> if you don't use it with the paper, then you will face the consequences. Yes. If you don't use the paper, you will show up at the doorstep and, and destroy <laughs> your kneecaps. Oh my god. And guess who will be at the back door? <laughs> you? There's no <laughs> run. So yes, that's it. What I do think uh, about the phylogeny that is very sta looks very stable to me and looks really good, and I'm honestly putting my faith in it. I'm going to be out here. Uh, looks very solidly supported is the various position of the clades and groups. Yes, like we mentioned, it's you know Ornithomimosauria, it's Compsognathidae and all that. Then it's Ornithomimosauria, there's Insauria and Albertosauridae, our sisters. Then we get uh, Protachyopteryx as basal to Peneraptera, which contains Oviraptorosauria, and then there's the halfway split, the Dinonychosauria and uh, Paravia. And I absolutely support the Archaeopterygid and Cyornid Thid lump. Lump? Lump it all. Yeah. Don't actually, but do. Now, uh, one of the things I think is most impressive about the paper, and what I was most looking forward to, is finally clarifying how flight evolved in birds. Because that's a complete mess, because there's a temporal paradox. So first of all, let me outline the problem to the temporal paradox in the origin of flight. Uh, or of flight in avian birds, at least. Because we have to make that distinction. Flight can evolve multiple times, but how did birds evolve flight? Uh, now, the issue is, um, Microraptor and all of these uh, Liaoning formation, sorry, Yishan, all of these Chinese taxa, seem to show a clear evolution of flight. They go to the trees, they have longer wings, and then they started gliding. Microraptor even has a, a second pair of wings essentially on its legs. But we also have Archaeopteryx, which was interpreted as the first bird. 
in the Jurassic. So how did that happen? How do we have the evolution of birds happening sometime in the early Cretaceous when we've already got the first bird in late Jurassic? And that's not even mentioning Rahanavis, a, a unilagine that developed the power to fly. What were unilagines was the, the, the question, were they flightless birds? So how did it happen and where did flight evolve? Did it evolve in Archaeopterygids? Did it just evolve in Microapterids? But then what about the temporal paradox? And what happened to unilagids? Turns out, Birds did not evolve flight in any of those. None of those led to birds. Yeah, so uh, one... separate little groups that evolved independently, basically. Yes. Uh, to illustrate this, I created this chart, which is clades only, as per the paper, and also shows where flight evolved. So this is not uh, a timeline. This is merely in terms of evolutionary, of how far along they were in evolution. Because obviously, how far along you are in evolution does not affect, is not affected by what time you're at, because some groups will evolve at different speeds. Like whales evolved in the last 65 million years. Silicons have been unchanged for over 200 million years, I believe. Um, God damn it, let me just cross-check that. I don't want to be spreading... Yes, yes, definitely, 400 million years. Uh, so here's the chart of the evolution within Manoraptora Forma and where flight happened. Flight uh, is indicated by a clade being in red. Blue is terrestrial, purely terrestrial, incapable of flight. So we have here Ornithomimosauridae, Ornithomimosauria, followed by Therizinosauridae and Alvarosauridae, Ovaraptorosauria, and then we have the halfway split that we mentioned at the base of uh, not Peneraptor, which is it? Uh, Paravis. Paravis. Yeah. And you'll see here we have the split. And up top, we have Archaeopterygids, which evolved flight after splitting off from, the, from that half line, essentially. Within, there's the line of, of evolution within Dinonychosauria, from which Archaeopterygids split off and then evolved flight. Then you have Unilagids, and also has Charapterions, but we didn't mention them that much. We, they're not as important. But we have Unilagids, which split off from the main line and then evolved flight. Troodontidae split off from the main line, never evolved flight. Microraptoria split off from the main line and evolve flight, but none of these three actually go anywhere. None of them leave any descendants. And then you have Aviale, which, as we said, split off at the base. So, completely irrespective of Archaeopterygidae, Unilagidae, and Microraptoria, Aviale evolve flight, and they do so after splitting off. Technically, twice. So base yes. Uh, yeah, they evolved so twice. They evolve uh, Scansoriopterygids, like Ichi, they evolve their completely bizarre bat-like flight with skin. And you also have this other group of birds, which evolved flight with feathers, like how Archaeopterygids, Unilagids, and Microraptoria did it independently. So basically, summing this up, what the paper shows is that birds evolved flight after splitting off from dinosaurs. It's not that dinosaurs evolved flight and became birds. Dinosaurs became birds and then evolved flight yes okay. and what you can also see sorry very interesting to say though L like yeah uh... oh yeah how many groups of um pheropods tried to evolve flight on their own and that's not even bringing into it up... scansoriopterygidae into it which are within avla and evolve their own thing completely yeah again yeah. from terrest from uh terrestrial or arboreal ancestors scansoriopterygids not evolved from f uh animals that were flying with feathers so, yeah, and so the origins, modern avian flight evolved in aves. Modern avian flight did not evolve in dinosaurs, even though an identical form of flight with wing feathers evolved in Archaeopterygidae, Unilagidae, Microraptoria. Bear in mind that Microraptoria is only somewhat similar because there's no guarantee they evolved flapping flight. So that's it. It's already drawn, and one other thing it contradicts is it goes against flightlessness. Or sorry, secondary flightlessness, by which, uh, let's say, paraves were flying at the base, and then unilagids, troodontids, and dromaeosaurids independently lost the ability to fly, which some argue is more parsimonious, even though there is absolutely no evidence showing secondary flightlessness in any way. There's nothing. We don't have a transitional form. We don't have any of that. All of it indicate. All we have. Are transitional forms of animals that were on the ground 
and developing flight or flying. We don't have anything suggesting otherwise. And now we also have this insane phylogeny, which, bizarre taxa placements aside because of insufficient data, solidly places these clades like this. It shows that in, in these clades, the evolution of flight was derived. There was no secondary flightlessness. It's honestly incredible. Indeed. And it just shows you really how diverse it could be. And convergent evolution is not that bizarre. Mosasaurs, for one, are all convergent evolution. There's two branches yeah. of Mosasaurs. Yeah, we have that... one branch, with it, which is Tyrosaurus and relatives, and the other being Mosasaurus and relatives. And they oh. did not evolve from an aquatic ancestor. They evolved from a common ancestor, which was at the best semi-aquatic, but maybe even terrestrial. Yes. Oh, man, yeah, but like Dallasaurus. <laughs> so basically, be open-minded, convergent evolution can happen so much. We see it so much in the fossil record. I mean, the obvious and... answer is dolphins, sharks, if you saw us all having the same yeah. basic body shape. Lump yes. dolphins and sharks. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> what, what, what did make sharks mammals or dolphins fish? I mean, no, this is not all, make all, them all, all separate fish. thing. Make no, don't don't don't, don't get all derination on me here. <laughs> Dollfish, done. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I'm writing a book. Yes, thank you. <laughs> Too small to swim. There, done. Oh God, no. Oh, no. But yeah, trying not to get. This is just. I love this. It's really revolutionary, I think, and I'm really hoping it catches on. I'm hoping this isn't, you know, another Ornithoskeleton day, but Ornithoskeleton day was flawed, and this is incredible. This is 15 years, no, 18 years, sorry, since it was discovered. This is it, and honestly, the phylogeny that has produced is mind blowing. I just can't. It's 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 incredible. It like could I this I could be finally the solution to how avian flight evolved? Yes. After so much. After all time. these years. Basically. Aviale would have evolved flight sometime in the late Jurassic or early Cretaceous, basically. We do have uh, Scansoriopterygids, which evolved flight uh, within Aviale, but it was not avian flight. Because it was basically like bats, essentially, with a membrane. But true avian wing flight within, so basically feathered wings used for flight within Aviale would have occurred in the late Jurassic or early Cretaceous. And it would have occurred separate from Archaeopterygidae, Unilagidae, and Microraptoria. This is oh, yeah. starting to fill up my brain. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, are, we have done most of the stuff from the paper already, so... Yeah. I'm not very. And yeah. God, that's impressive stuff. Is that all of the classification stuff? Those are the groups, yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the groups. Much. I mean, I've left out, I've left out some of the more basal ones, like C uh, Comsognathidae. Uh, but within you're the trying to tell me that Comsognathus didn't fly. <gasps> I'm no way. shocked. No, yeah, of course the obvious um, flightless taxa are excluded in the flightless um, plates. What do you mean? I mean, like, you start with only for Mimosauria, you don't start with Tyrannosauria or more base. Yeah, and it. I'm, I, it's not because of flightlessness that I'm doing this. It's simply because there's no reason, because they're all flight. They, they, none of them have bearing on exactly. the, the evolution of flight. And also, I'm just following the paper, which pretty much starts with Manor of Chloroforma. I could have included the paper's version of Comsignathidae, but there would have been no point. Yeah. So, yeah, so that's it. Um, there it is. Beautiful. Indeed. And I'm really looking forward to seeing second opinions. I'm really looking forward to... Properly... I'm really looking forward to Saurian's remodel of um, the Cotoraptor. <laughs> ah, but they have to finish the, the Tyrannosaurus first because that leg muscle just isn't correct. Yeah. We haven't... That. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, that's, that, the, the leg muscle is a story for another day. Yeah, uh, in I fact, know. Saurian itself is a story for another day. We could do so much. <laughs> We'll see. But, yeah. All right, it? so I believe we can't say anything more about the phylogeny or the origin of flight. Really impressive stuff. But wait, isn't this an episode about Laurie? 
Oh yeah, um, I forgot about her. <clears throat> we yeah. ignored Lori for half this episode. R more yeah. than half. More a than good half. four half. fifths of the whole entire episode. That being said, the phylogeny is mind blowing, and it is technically all inspired by the discovery of Lori. I mean, none of this would have happened. The discovery of a Jurassic troodontid is just autumn by itself. Is just so incredible. Indeed. So all of this came from Lori. No, well, that's it. And Lori herself. Uh, Hesperon Authority's Mislerai. Would it have been capable of flight? Almost definitely not. Those wings are very small. I'll be sharing a picture of it. Uh, this time I'll be sharing one by Sizio Purple. I mean, I would have done the one by um, Shin, but... Just a second. I'm I going with Sizio Purple. Sizio Purple is our go-to. I mean, we did the, 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 the Fu Yang Venator and all that, I believe. We did all of this stuff. Sure. So let's just go with... Has... Uh... Sizio's reconstruction. Yeah, you can see very short armed, very long legs, definitely cursorial. This was not arboreal at all. Your generic small cutesy troodontid, very small, very cutesy actually. Adorable. Just imagine that like next to an Allosaurus, that would be adorable. <laughs> and also lunch. <laughs> well, adorable that's got lunch. stuck real quick. <laughs> Just gotta run. Yeah. I mean, god damn I would love to see. Legs. Come on, we need Hesperon authorities in the, the next time Morris information is in a documentary. Yes. yes. We need it, absolutely. Yes. Uh, did you want to share Sh Shin Red Deer's art? Yes. Um, oh, actually, I'm just going to say Shin Red Deer because I have no idea how to pronounce your first name. Sorry. Sorry, dudes. That's okay. <laughs> we, we, already, we already know Shin Red Deer as Shin Red Deer from the art submission. Yes. Oh, oh yeah. I... Oh. Yeah, it's wonderful. Again, I mean, he's basically legs. the guy who introduced me to Rory. Like, without oh, okay. him, I wouldn't know this <laughs> animal at all. Yeah. Lovely as well. Very long legs, very long tail. Very thin tail as well. Uh, of course, he was covered up in fluff. Uh, let's also share the official artwork by Gabriel Guetto. Yes. I believe that's, yeah. This was the, the press release work that was officially commissioned to accompany it. Yeah, it's... Again, very impressive. Even more yeah. floof. Even more floof. Even more floof. Yeah, we, we've slowly increased in levels of floof as we posted images. <laughs> I, I, Akira, you told me to, do, to, do a, to draw a lorry, and I quickly had to draw it now. <laughs> I actually finished it. Okay, oh, okay. I'm, well, I'm that's... curious how that turned out, given the time. It's just like... Yeah. No, shh. It's just, it, I it's did just a, little... a smiley face with some feathers around it. <laughs> Here it is. I actually made a quick squitch. The squ squitch? I wanted to make... Uh... Squitch? The squitch. <laughs> <laughs> squitch. Okay. Here it is. <laughs> very fast, very uh, sketchy. Very but, fast. Well... Very nice. Oh, you, nice. You've got the thinness of the tail perfectly. Uh, I think it was a very fun uh, tail. Yeah, I like that. It. Guess it's my turn now to draw because... one. I would say the head's a bit way. small. The head's a bit yeah, small. Yeah, I, I saw that. I saw that. I mean, the me. head IRL is longer than the lower arm bone, to put that in context. It's really long yeah. stuff. Yeah. Almost as long as the thigh. So, yeah. Big, chunky baby head. Really adorable. Chunky. I, like uh, I, I believe it was an adult. I'm just going to double check, but... I think it's an adult. I mean, yeah, it has a, a fused cervical ribs, uh, general skeletal proportions. The cranium is not relatively enlarged to the extent of being a baby. It's just general small troodontid size. Yeah, like one meter, less than one, a bit less yeah. than one meter. Yeah, so not very old, but adult or sub-adult. So. And the size was 89 centimeters. Yeah. Yep. Adorable. Indeed. It's like one of the smallest uh, Morrison uh, predators. It's, I'd say it's the smallest Morrison I think, theropod. I think, yeah, theropod, yeah. Definitely theropod, and I mean, unless you're counting insects, I'd say it's the smallest vertebrate predator as well. I mean, the, the we could, like, there are some, uh, some Morrison Copa mammals. Coparian is technically the smallest one because it's just a tooth. <laughs> Not the tooth, actually. <laughs> no, no. Uh, oh, but yeah, I mean, yeah, there we were some uh, mammals, more some mammals, so uh, I don't know what... True, touche. Mammals touché. don't count. 
Yeah. Mammals aren't Mam vertebrates. Mammals, mammals, oh. mammals. They're just <laughs> yeah. turtles with fur. Only stem Indeed. mammals matter. There were actually the turtles as well. And crocodiles. Oh, wow. Oh, the it's crocodiles vicious. matter, of course, but... Yeah. But they were all big. They were bigger. They weren't like small wimps like the no. I mean, there uh, are kind some of, pretty kind small of, like, ones. There's a Eutro -ter uh, how how was it, its name? Eutro Tyrannosuchus, I think that's how you pronounce it. It's like a meter and a half, so it's not it's not that it's not that big actually. Okay, here's hoping Wikipedia auto corrects me when I look for that I because think, that is definitely not its name. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Oh, I... it's very weird. I I can't I can't wait. I I wanna I wanna find it. Oh, Utretoranosuchus. Well, it's the same thing. What did I say? <laughs> it was one point seventy seven meters long. Okay, what did I say? I was that's, actually right. That's a bit. Um. <laughs> shush, shush. Oh, here. okay. You have Hoplosuchus, which is 20 centimeters exactly. long. But uh, hello, books, uh, Hoplosuchus. Oh, a little baby boy. Yeah, yeah which are pretty small. They are, in fact, crocodile moths. Oh. So. Yeah, Fruta Champsa is also under one meter long. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no. Okay, so I stand corrected. You can have like an epic battle between Lori and Fruta Champsa. You also have Makelognephus, which was a Shinosuchen. You could have the two fighting over a little dragonfly or something. Yeah, but that was bigger. But that's long leg boy. But anyways, we're getting off topic now. Uh, no, yes. it's more information. It's never off topic. Hush, no. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> okay. Hush, yo yo. Okay. Your I'm, profile I'm... pic will not deter us. <laughs> but yeah, no, that's lovely, lovely genus. Really incredible. And please feature it in a documentary soon, please. Yes. Please. This is the only time. This is the only time that I want the Mars information to be featured How in another documentary. Dare How dare you? You could spin a wheel and yeah. just pick a documentary and I'll have the f formation of the Morrison. Yeah, but it doesn't. Yeah. Like, the formation of the Morrison. Literally. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the formation of the Morrison. Okay, be quiet. <laughs> Fine. Yes. They need so. Lori in it now. Now they do. Just re-edit, just re-release uh, Plant Dinosaur with Lori in the background. Just edit in every scene with Lori, but like no other dinosaur <laughs> except for Lori. Okay, can I just say Lori is such a cute name though? <laughs> Lori yes. as a nickname is yes, epic, it is. all I'm calling it ever. Yeah, we could do not... like a, you could do like a di and like Dinosaur Planet had Pod the Pyraptor. You could do Lori the Hesperon Authorities. Dinosaur Planet Two, where you at? Yeah. Uh... <laughs> You do know I'm referring to the Discovery Channel Dinosaur Planet, not Planet Dinosaur by the BBC, because people often confuse the two. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, good. Because there was a lack of visible excitement among you guys. Come on, guys, support it! Yay! Woo! I was looking yeah. at my phone! Yes! Uh, I think I have okay. the DVD for one of them. I don't remember which one. I have the DVD for both of them. Hush. I okay. have the DVD for neither of them. All right. Yo, yo, how many DVDs do you have of them? <laughs> jokes on, jokes on yo, yo, you can't afford a DVD. Well, no, that's just, that's just harsh. That, that's just harsh. <laughs> I mean, is he wrong? Now, no, look, are we just going to talk about my financial... <laughs> <laughs> <What's> <laughs> <me>? <laughs> <laughs> No. People, don't donate to our Patreon, otherwise New York isn't going to eat tonight. <laughs> Please, guys, we need the money. <laughs> Yo, you're starving. Yeah. <laughs> He's already eaten sassy. Quickly. <laughs> it was hard. He wasn't giving up, but I ate him at last. Vote in the comments for who we should eat next. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I hope I don't get voted off the island. <laughs> Except that voting off the island in this case means cannibalism. Plot twist. I mean, yeah, you get voted off so he eats himself. <laughs> Self war. <laughs> I'm oh, gonna stop you right you there. You had to use the <laughs> word, didn't I you? Had to, you I'm had to use the V word. Think, come on. I, man. I had to. Come on. I'll never eat yourself now. 
No, people haven't voted yet. This is unfair. Yeah, this, this is unfair, unfair dude. My it's outrageous. It's unfair. <laughs> this okay. isn't a republic or a democracy. It's a dictatorship. Oh my god. Would you call it an empire? Perhaps. Uh, perhaps. Okay, back to Lori. <laughs> There's nothing to say about Lori anymore. I've been silent throughout this. <laughs> <laughs> Too scared to make any comment. But yeah, like, that pretty much rounds it up. Uh, not much else to say. Lori, in and of herself, I'm calling Lori female. Oh, did you, did you talk about the... Did you talk, did you talk about the Lori's diet? Like, uh, there, uh, I, I talked to Yoshua, some, like, uh... Probably an the, omnivore, I'm gonna say. Uh, like, there was, there was some, uh, I think, unofficial stuff, the author, don't quote me on this, okay? I think he said that uh, the authors, um, unofficially uh, suggested that it might have hunted fish, uh, from, uh, from its teeth. Like, they were, uh, quite similar to other fish eaters, and uh, especially the, the big... Uh, you know, uh, that big uh, tooth that it has on its max maxilla, like yeah. bigger than uh, the other ones. It does. It has a very elongated tooth on its maxilla. Uh, yes. I'll try and share a picture, but I don't think I can. Or I'll just zoom in on the skeletal one. <laughs> probably, probably, uh, probably though, I, I I would say omnivore yeah. would be uh, parsimonious. Like, it would be the yeah. simplest. Cause, cause there's this grasshopper. I actually kind of um, so I actually drew, drew it. Uh, th that's oh, really that's what that is supposed. Yeah, to it's be. a grasshopper. Um, but it's it's about that size actually. So I would I would uh, think that it it actually could eat it. Ah, okay. It, it would only live off grasshoppers. Nothing more. Nothing. <laughs> only grasshoppers. Of course, that explains why it has massive teeth. Uh. Yes. <laughs> of course. Right, well, I'd like to hear more of Laurie, um, but we may not have talked much about Laurie in this episode of the podcast named Laurie, or Hesperon Authority's Miss Laurie, or Laurie. We should just but, call it uh, Laurie's in parentheses, in parentheses, just phylogeny mostly. <laughs> that is the biggest part of the paper. I mean, Laurie did spur this on. So it is Laurie's legacy, and it is absolutely incredible, and does deserve to be discussed. And it's just what? So <laughs> <laughs> nice voice, Craig. <laughs> I love that. Thank I you. love that. I love that. Perfect. Uh, I mean, not just the taxa, but the the clades, the reassessment of the clades, the implications for the evolution of flight, the uh, the rebuttal towards the secondary flightlessness hypothesis. So literally everything we just talked about. Yes, all of it from Laurie, so it counts, and it's all incredible. Yes. Um, that's literally all we'd go on saying if we kept recording, so we're going to cut it short here. Uh. Are you d what? <laughs> Just, uh. uh. What, what? Uh. Okay. Uh. okay. Is there a, that's is there how the episode ends. Okay. <laughs> that's all, all of us think, uh. 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 <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> just start, starts moaning. <laughs> oh my god. Okay, okay. Ending the episode. End episode Goodbye. now. Turn turn off the camera. <laughs> what camera? The best what party. are you doing? My computer's gonna die in three, two, one. <laughs> 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 Wasn't that epic? <laughs> Everybody this was expecting an explosion. Everybody was expecting an explosion. Just... <laughs> oh my god. Okay. Okay. Uh, well, yeah, that's it. Time that we yep. farewell. Come to a close. Farewell, 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 my friends. Adios. See you later. Bye. Bye bye. bye.